Your Excellency Nguyen Suan Phuc, Prime Minister of Vietnam, Your Majesty Excellencies. Let me first and foremost express my sincere thanks to all my colleagues, heads of governments of ASEAN, for your congratulatory messages on my assumption to the office of the Prime Minister of Malaysia. Thank you. Our meeting today could not be at a more crucial time. Nations across the globe are facing an unprecedented pandemic, and we in ASEAN are not excluded from the dangers of COVID-19. As governments, we are confronting a combination of a health and economic crisis head on. For people around the world, more than a quarter have been confined to their homes due to the various levels of movement restrictions imposed by the governments. Borders and airports are closed, businesses are shut, and schools have been canceled. This is a new normal we must get used to. These are extraordinary times. And a coherent multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholders, whole of ASEAN approach is critical in ensuring our timely and effective response to this pandemic. This is a war against an invisible enemy and the aftermath will result in a new global landscape. The world will never be the same again. And we in ASEAN must acclimatize ourselves with what is going to be the new global order. Simply put, the new normal. Your Majesty, Excellencies, Malaysia is deeply concerned with the rising number of COVID-19 cases in our region as ASEAN has witnessed a rapid escalation of infections in the past few weeks. Globally, the situation is just as bad, if not worse. Undeniably, Malaysia is not spared from the ravages of COVID-19. In our efforts to fight against the coronavirus, we have put in place several key strategies to address critical health, economic, and social issues brought about by the pandemic. Just one month ago, on the 16th of March, my government decided to impose a movement control order, the MCO, which directed the closure of non-essential government and private sectors, <clears throat> a prohibition of mass movements and gathering, and a strong advice for Malaysians to stay at home. In addition, Malaysia has also mandated all our citizens returning from abroad to undergo a compulsory quarantine for two weeks. On screening and testing, we are aggressively increasing our capacity to conduct even more tests per million capita, followed by rigorous contact tracing and treatments to all patients, regardless of their levels of symptoms and illnesses. I understand that more tests may result in higher reported infections, but it is needed to ensure we swiftly detect and treat those infected. As of yesterday, our mortality rate stands at 1.6% as compared to the global average of 6.1%. And this pandemic is about saving lives and making sure our Malaysians who are infected get the appropriate treatment and recover fully. On that note, we have provided much needed support to our Ministry of Health by approving 1.5 billion ringgit for them to increase the capacity in screening and further intensify treatment for those infected. And this will help in obtaining more test kits, ventilators, and personal protective equipments. On behalf of Malaysia, I would like to thank our friends in ASEAN who have contributed test kits and medical equipment in our times of need. It is times like these that we truly appreciate how valuable all the assistance rendered by our ASEAN friends. And this is what makes us different than other regional groups around the world. 
Your Majesty, Excellencies, initially our urgency focused on saving lives, but now we have much focus on our economy. The livelihoods of our citizens depend greatly on commerce, and we understand that our people are going through tough times. Global trade has slowed down, and some businesses even at a standstill. Resources are being stretched, and our governments need to help those most in need. In this regard, Malaysia announced three stimulus packages worth 260 billion ringgit, or 64.6 billion US dollars, to cushion the impact of COVID-19 on our people and businesses. And these stimulus packages have a face value of 18.1% of our nation's gross domestic product, which includes loan repayment deferments, wage subsidies, cash handouts, and even free internet for our people for the next few months. However, these strategies will only assist Malaysia in getting through this period of fighting COVID-19. There needs to be a regional post-pandemic recovery plan, and Malaysia cannot do this alone. Your Majesty Excellencies, in every crisis lies an opportunity, and Malaysia foresees that ASEAN as a regional bloc must work together post-COVID-19. All our nations are facing similar complications, and we must work together to ensure no one is left behind. Looking ahead, Malaysia would like to propose that our economic ministers have an immediate discussion to begin shaping an ASEAN economic recovery plan, which focuses not just on the financial aspects of our economies, but also on social welfare, safety nets, food security, and education for our peoples. The ASEAN Economic Recovery Plan must include measures we as a region will undertake to address issues directly faced by our more than 600 million citizens to preserve supply chain connectivity, the smooth flow of essential medical, food and essential supplies, and ensure critical infrastructure for trade and trading routes via air, land and sea are preserved and remain open. We must also guard against the imposition of unnecessary restriction on the flow of medical, food, and essential supplies. As a region, Malaysia urges our ASEAN member states to reinforce ourselves in facing a new landscape in our region. We must not allow ASEAN to revert back to our comfort zone but make ASEAN emerge as a new growth center, a new powerhouse, not just for our 600 million people, but for the world. Your Majesty's Excellencies, Malaysia also expresses its support for the establishment of the COVID-19 ASEAN Response Fund to expand the scale of existing emergency stockpiles for any future pandemics we may face as a region. We must further develop our regional reserves of medical supplies, as well as utilize relevant ASEAN reserve warehouses to support the needs of ASEAN member states in public health emergencies. The various ASEAN mechanisms and structures platform led by or hosted by Malaysia, such as the ASEAN Emergency Operations Center Network for Public Health Emergency, ASEAN EOC Network, and ASEAN Risk Assessment and Risk Communication Center, ARACRC, have proven that we are able to work swiftly in finding solutions to this crisis. Let me assure your majesty and excellencies that Malaysia stands ready and resolute with ASEAN to combat this pandemic together. I am confident that with solidarity, vision and leadership, we can unite and get through these dark times together. As a region, we have faced multiple crises before this, and I believe we will once again overcome this and emerge stronger than ever. God willing, inshallah. Thank you.
Thank you, Prime Minister. And next, I would like to invite State Councillor Myanmar Aung San Suu Kyi to take the floor.